our mission is to deliver Brexit on the 31st of October for the purpose of uniting and re-energising our great United Kingdom and making this country the greatest place on earth. Could you imagine a United Kingdom without Northern Ireland, Scotland and Wales? Well, some believe that the UK would fall apart after a no-deal Brexit. There's already calls in Scotland for another referendum on the Union. New PM Boris Johnson is considering direct rule in Northern Ireland, which could in theory unite the island of Ireland. And in Wales, there's fears the EU could impose tariffs on farming products. So could this really be the beginning of the end of the United Kingdom? The UK has been together for hundreds of years since the Acts of Union were passed in 1707. And while the awesome foursome, as Johnson called them, has had their ups and downs, the Union has remained intact. Now, with the uncertainty of a looming exit from the European Union just along the horizon, could this all be about to change? Keeping to tradition, Boris Johnson began his nationwide tour as Prime Minister in Scotland, meeting First Minister Nicola Sturgeon and Scottish Conservative leader Ruth Davidson, who were both strongly against leaving without a deal. During the recent visit, it was visibly clear that tensions were high with the First Minister. Sturgeon believes Boris is sending the UK on the inevitable path to no-deal Brexit, which she believes would be catastrophic to Scotland and the whole of the UK. I made abundantly clear to Boris Johnson uh, my opposition to Brexit and to a no-deal Brexit and also made it clear to him that the people of Scotland should be able to chart uh, their own course and choose their own future, not have that future imposed upon them. In 2014, the people of Scotland voted not to become an independent state by 55.3% to 44.7% after a referendum was called to decide its future. But now, as Scotland faces being taken out of the EU against the will of its remaining majority, come what may, do or die and deal or no deal, Sturgeon has said another independence referendum is highly likely. On the other side, Boris has refused to rule out blocking a second referendum on Scottish independence. And things aren't that much easier for Boris on his own side. Ruth Davidson, whilst backing Boris's ambition to get a deal through Brussels, won't be so forthcoming if he continues to plough ahead with plans to leave the UK out of the EU without a deal. I said that I wanted to see the same level of, of energy and vigour that's going into no-deal planning going into trying to get a deal. I wanted to see the sort of shuttle diplomacy that's going to be required if we're going to see changes that can be brought back to the House of Commons and I received the assurances that I was looking for. Which might then lead to Wales also reassessing its place in the Union. If this Prime Minister has a positive pursuit of a no-deal Brexit as his idea of what the future of the United Kingdom needs, then he will certainly find no support for that here in Wales. The First Minister of Wales, Mark Drakeford, has already hinted that being in the UK isn't unconditional and that independence has to be seriously considered if Scotland breaks away from the UK. I emphasised to the Prime Minister the catastrophic effect that that would have on the Welsh Economy. Before meeting with Drakeford on his next stop, Mr Johnson visited a chicken farm after threats of civil unrest in rural areas of Wales were made by its farmers' union. The farming industry is worth more than £6 billion to the Welsh economy and Welsh farmers are heavily reliant on free trade with the EU. If the UK left the EU without an agreement, Wales would likely face significant tariffs on their farming exports to EU countries. No deal is on the table uh, because of the fact that we have a very belligerent European Union who instead of focusing on a deal that was good for all of us, wanted to break up the United Kingdom, something of course which no British Prime Minister should be a part of. But Boris has assured he's first and foremost committed to striking a deal with Brussels. We will look after the farming sector. How? How will exactly sure, will you look after We will make sure that they have the support that they need, uh, that if there are markets that are going to be tricky, that we help them uh, to find new markets, that we uh, have interventions uh, that are aimed to support 
uh, them and, and their income. In the final leg of his whistle-stop tour, Johnson then met with representatives from the five parties of Northern Ireland, with big hopes of trying to convince the DUP and Sinn Féin to restart the power-sharing government of Stormont, which collapsed in January 2017 after a number of disputes between the two parties. Clearly the uh, people of Northern Ireland have been without a government, without uh, Stormont for two years and six months, so my, my prime focus this morning is to do everything I can to help that get up and running again. Since 1998, the Good Friday Agreement has largely kept a fragile peace between the two sides after 30 years of violence. Now the worry is that dramatic changes to the makeup of Northern Ireland could lead to clashes reigniting. We've challenged him very strongly on that policy. We've set out very clearly that this would be catastrophic for the Irish economy, uh, for Irish livelihoods, for our society, for our politics and for our peace accord. Sinn Féin leader Mary Lou Macdonald repeated her demands to Boris that he must include a border poll in his Brexit planning in case of a no deal. This could essentially unite the island of Ireland, further threatening the foundations of the UK. Westminster has also refused to deny that Boris might well step in to introduce direct rule over the region. Direct rule is not acceptable and we're not going backwards. We can only go forwards. Um, St Andrew's Agreement removed the ability for the British government to go backwards and to roll back on direct rule. So it's not acceptable to me and it certainly wouldn't be acceptable to the Irish government, I would expect also. As the PM is dead set on taking us out of the EU on the 31st of October, with or without a deal, the future of the UK as we know it hangs in the balance. And whether Scots would rather leave the UK to join the EU remains to be seen.